Welcome, my name is Danielle Arnold and I'm a PhD student at the University of Florida. My research interests are reproduction and conservation in domestic and wildlife herbivores. So why do we study animal behavior? People love animals and are captivated by exotics. From watching popular nature shows such as Animal Planet to African safari tours, we're able to see animals and nature and we're able to appreciate and enjoy them. We study animals to better understand why they behave the way they do why they make the decisions they do, how they think and feel, and to learn about their emotions and social connections. Scientists study animal behavior to find insights into animals and even in some cases into our own behaviors. And we want to know the science behind it. The science of animal behavior is called ethology. Scientists travel the world and document the different behaviors and interactions between animals in their natural environments. Wild animals in captivity serve as ambassadors to their species. Modern zoos and aquariums are popular throughout the world. When we see animals in real life and how they act and how they behave, we are even more captivated by them. The purpose of zoos and aquariums is to engage the public with animal experiences. When we can use our senses to see, to hear, to smell, and even in some cases to touch the animals, we become more engaged and captivated. The association of zoos and aquariums ensures that the animals in captivity are well taken care of and that they are committed to animal care, conservation, and education. Zoos and aquariums are also educational. There is signage around the zoos to educate the public about the animals and their status, as well as outreach programs like keeper talks and interactive activities to educate the youth about the animals. Zoos and aquariums also play a large role in the conservation of a species. Zoo populations are a reserve population for wild populations, especially those that are endangered or almost extinct. Zoos and aquariums spend an approximate 350 million US annually on conservation efforts. The zoo industry is spending a lot of money on conservation, but it's not enough. We are now faced with which species to save, since we don't have enough funding to save them all. The Przewalski's horse illustrates a conservation success story. The Przewalski's horse is the true wild horse. In the 1950s, their population was down to 12 reproductively sound animals in captivity. In the 1960s, they were extinct in the wild. In 1959, the Prague Zoo organized the first international symposium on the preservation of the Przewalski horse, creating a breeding plan to save the species. Today, the population consists of almost 2,000 animals. Other conservation success stories are the black-footed ferret, who went from one population to thousands today, the panda and the condor. By evaluating the behavior of captive animals, we can gain understanding of some of their innate behaviors. It might not be their natural setting, which is obviously the best, but it's as close to their natural setting as we can make it, and it allows us to study, their, study and observe their behaviors up close. It's also important to understand their behavior for the animal's welfare. We want to ensure that they're healthy and happy. The picture here shows an example of a horse cribbing, which is what we call a stereotypic or a stress behavior. We want to fix and avoid these behaviors so we can ensure we have a healthy and happy horse. And finally, evaluating the behavior of captive animals can be used as a useful tool to teach others the basics of scientific inquiry. So what's next? Next, we're gonna tell you about an introduction to the basic of animal behavior research.